Hello everybody, my name is the notorious Conor McGregor and today I'm going to take you on a tour of the Mac Mansion. This is the kitchen, my favourite part. That's the pantry, yeah? I never knew what a pantry was until I came here. We don't have pantries back home. Fridge, of course, let's see what's in the fridge. Good quality meats. Good green veg. Eggs. Some salmon. We're all, we're all eating good here. What I done was I wrote out some rules. I'll actually get you the rules. Hang on. The Mac Mansion House rules. Rule number one. Don't talk about Fight Club. Rule five. This is the rule that is to do with the fridge. No processed sugars, treats, desserts. But I don't want to come down here and open up my fridge and see a big cake staring at my face and then tempt me because then I'll eat the whole damn thing, you know what I mean? You come up, we head to the games room. Nice spiral stairs. This is the games room. If there's any fights or anything on, you're banging on up there. Poker table. Master bedroom's filthy, but my lady is gone, otherwise it would have been spotless. This is the master bathroom. Big shower, his and hers, sinks, the his and hers bathroom, my bathroom in there has a urinal, sauna here, walk-in wardrobe, I'm probably just going to train in it, after the fight maybe wreck the place, big after party here I'd imagine, have it all set up, and then bounce, go somewhere else. It just made sense to me. And plus, what's, who doesn't want to live here throughout the summer with their teammates and learn and train and have fun and relax? It's, it seems like a holiday to me at the same time. And I mean, if it's right to go over there, across that way to that MGM, take, take what's mine, take my belt. So that's what will happen. Okay, everybody, that was your tour of the Mac Mansion. So I will show you the exit. You don't have to go home. You have to get the hell out of here. <laughs> So thank you so much. You can't walk down the street now, anywhere in Ireland, without being known. How, how, how is it dealing with that? How is it having to give your time? Because there are so many people who know who you are. I tell you what, for a, for a period of time, it was messing me up. I was like, didn't want to go nowhere. You know, not that I didn't want to go nowhere, but I just was like, it was always, it's an event to go somewhere. I can't just go somewhere and do something. And now I don't give it. Now I'm, now I am going places. You know what I mean? Like when I was in LA and when I was in Vegas, and we were planning on coming back and saying, right, this is going to be insane coming back. I need to, I need to figure out <clears throat> how I'm going to come back. And then I'm thinking, oh, it's going to be too heavy. I can't come in here and train, fight camp, and it's just going to be too like a like. Like I'm in a fishbowl or something. Then I came back and I was like, I love this place. This is my home. When I walk into the gym, there's a lot of kids, a lot of things I have to sign, and people ask me to sign and take pictures. But that's okay. That's, I help build that gym. I help build that, that place to what it is. That is my home. I feel comfortable in there no matter what. Like people will be sitting there videoing me, or I, I see that sometimes when I'm just sitting there and eating food, and I see a guy holding a camera like that, trying not to make eye contact with me, but he's videoing me eating food. And, I, and before I'd be like, I can't, that freaks me out, but now I'm cool with it. it it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's okay. It's, it's Are they a all good positives? Problem. Is they all yeah, positives, it's, really? It's, yeah, it is all. I mean, not everyone's positive. Not everyone's, you know what I mean? Not everyone's happy to see a man succeed. As, 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 as wrong as that is, but not everyone is happy to see another man succeed. So that maybe was in my head a little bit too much. And I kind of let that play into me a little bit. But now I just, I put my feet up and I relax. I have a good team of people, I have a good setup. I feel free to go anywhere with no hesitation. Before I'd be like, all right, I want to go into town. I'd be like, I can't, you know what I mean? It's a bit too, uh, am I ready to be, some people just drag out you and just, you know what I mean? Then that's a little bit heavy, but it, uh, it's not too bad. People are understanding, most are f fans, you know what I mean? That's a great thing to walk down the street and see a little kid and he's a fan and he's shaking. And the other day we were in Nando's eating food. And there was a girl sitting right there, and I just turned around, she's bawling, crying. 
like literally in tears crying, like I was like I was something from uh, One Direction or something. <laughs> so it's good. It's, it's, a good, it's a good feeling. You know what I mean? So I, I I tell myself it's a good feeling, and it is a good feeling. Jose Aldo. Do you have any feeling that he may not turn up on the night? I don't think he'll be there. I just don't think he'll be there. He didn't show up the last time. We'll see. Have you just got a hunch, a, a, a feeling that he just doesn't want to face you? Yeah. Is it based on history? He's pulled out of five... History, eye contact, words, mind frame. Even his gym, his training approach. I just don't don't think with all those things combined that he can make it to the contest. But if he if he shows up, I feel I uh, will KO him inside one. If he makes that walk and if he is in the octagon, I feel every single every single movement I make will get an overreaction off of him because he's emotionally invested in it. There's too much in it for him. The whole country of Brazil, they all it's all piling on him. So I I feel if I just go, <laughs> he will react a million times too much. That's what I see the fight playing now. I feel him overreacting, overextending, and then being KO'd unconscious. You're not the champion yet. I am the champion. Well, you're actually the interim title holder at the moment. I'm a three-time world champion. At the moment, you're the interim featherweight champion. And at the moment, at the he moment, holds the belts. At the moment, I'm the cage warriors. World Featherweight Champion. I'm the Cage Warriors World Lightweight Champion. I'm the UFC 145 pound Featherweight World Champion. But when you beat Jose, you become the unified champion. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's... He has one, I have one. My one's... My, you're only as good as your last one. His last one. 15 months ago. <laughs> Who's the champion? Who's the champion there? So, interim, take that interim out of there. There ain't no interim in this. I'm, I'm a world champion. He's a world champion. We're gonna find out who's the unified world champion. Don't put interim in there, I don't like that. Reebok sent a load of gear over and I said interim. So what the f is that interim doing on my I showed up, he did not. Look into my eyes, little man. Little Brazilian. What happens if you do lose to Jose Aldo? That is not in the equation. That does not process in my brain one for one second. Can you not allow yourself then as a fighter to go into that? I could try, yeah. but it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't even happen. Is, is I there couldn't even try and feel that if I tried my best. It's not going to happen. Is there like a safe that's in your brain that's locked and it just doesn't open? I don't open know. That door? I'm not a neurologist. I'm not a neurologist. I just cannot see it. I cannot feel it, so... It's fascinating that there isn't a chink of doubt, a chink of light that allows doubt into your mind over those yeah. things. Where does that come from, I Connor? Know, just from, just from what I see, what I feel, what I know. And presumably all the hard work you put in that we don't see behind the scenes as well, Pete. I feel I'm only warming up. But on December the 12th, in the evening, when we're all leaving the arena, and we're coming to see you at the press conference, what are we going to be saying and what are you, you going to be saying? Be, you know what you're going to be seeing? Something, something nice. Something nice material. And where's it going to be? What do you mean, where's it going to be? Where's the material going to be? I mean, I'm draped around me. Fitted perfectly. Um, What's going to be around your waist? You're going to see the belt right there, right on the stage. You're going to see a banged up Brazilian. Hopefully we see that. Could be, could be somebody else. But you'll see me there with a gold belt, a brand new custom made suit, and a smile on my face. Poor as I went on, the amount of media obligations, the amount of times I felt like I was a monkey in the zoo, locked in a cage, and they feed me a banana and tell me to dance. So I, came, I overcame a lot of adversity and a lot of hard work to get to that octagon. And then you're talking what it was. You're talking of the arena, you're talking of the weigh-ins the day before, the amount of people that came out and traveled. Like I said, post-fight, that 
Stands, that stands to me, Gareth. I'd never, ever forget that. I am grateful for every single person that's been supporting me on this journey. And, and then the gold belt, the, the big, the real check. Now it's the real check. The rest aren't real checks. This is the one where I can, I can do what I've been dreaming of doing, giving back to the people who have given so much to me. That is why the emotion came out of me. I know you lived with mum and dad for a long time. You're very, very close-knit family. A lot of love in your family. You know, you're the apple of their eye, I mean, of your whole family. I understand that you gave back to them after your last fight as well. In my home, like many other homes in Ireland, the real stress and the real fights come from the mortgage, come from this stress of home. A lot of people are getting evicted from their homes around here. So that's something that I've grew up with. That was a big stress in my family. It caused a lot of stress, so I just wanted to give it back and help out and just do that. And just... My mother and father are still young. Now they, now they have their feet up. They can relax. They, can... they are in a new place, so it's good. That's, that's something I always dreamed of. I always, I always visualised what giving would feel like, giving to people who have given to me, what that would feel like. I always dreamed of just showing up one day and be like, here. There's not a day that I wake up and do not pinch myself and be grateful for everything in my life. You ask Conor McGregor and he'll tell you he was destined to be the best fighter in the UFC. I knew everything would happen. He was here. I cannot believe it. I can't believe it, but I, I could believe it and I did believe it. So that, that's why it happened. In fact, bang in the middle of Dana and Lorenzo's office. You know, Dana's office is there, Lorenzo's office is there, and my office will be bang in the middle. Growing up in Dublin, a big office wasn't in his plans. He was more concerned about taking out the bully on the block. There was many times where I fought, and there was many times where I backed down. So I was no different than any young kid. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. McGregor started boxing as a teenager and quickly moved into mixed martial arts. He witnessed his first UFC fight in 2009 and said, that's what I want to do. He quickly rose up the ranks and found himself in the UFC and hasn't looked back. His last loss was in Ireland in 2010. As one of the two biggest stars in the sport, I asked Connor who would be most proud of his accomplishments, his father or his mother? I think they're both equally proud of me. I mean, to see their son achieve their dreams, they are both big fans of what's happening here. They, my father is a big, big fan of the sport um, since, since he saw my success and, and you know, he, he showed up at every fight and then my mother has, I could be doing anything and my mother would have my back. 27 years old and living the life he always dreamed. His fans call him the Celtic Tiger or the Irish Ali. They even say the UFC stands for United for Connor. This story has never been told before. There has never been another man in this position. In, even in this sport, you know, before me, no one had a, uh, had a registered a win inside the octagon, let alone headline events, let alone win world titles. So. Coming off his knockout win over Mendez, the featherweight finally gets his chance to fight champion Josie Aldo in UFC 194. It'll take place in December in Las Vegas. Connor is already a two to one favorite. What else can I say? He went running. Now he claims he's back. We'll see. I'll be there like I was there July 11th. The former plumber from Dublin is right where he thought he would be, even challenging boxing's pound for pound king Floyd Mayweather. He recently told The Guardian he'd dismantle him in seconds in a fight that would generate a half a billion dollars. Who knows? But that's why they're united for Connor in the UFC. Chris Matthews, 8 Sports Now.